I'm going to, despite being a mediocre screen sharer, I'm going to try it anyway. Give me one second. Um, all right. Can you see that? Are we good? Yeah. All right. Sweet. Uh, first and foremost, I just want to say thanks to Francesca and thanks to Sean and Tri Can Tri uh, County Sustainability for having me, even though I put Tri State there. Um, my apologies. Uh, it's awesome to be with a uh, such a great group, and also it's it's somewhat rare that we end up talking to folks in South Jersey, and I feel at home among who I'm going to assume my fellow Phillies fans are in celebrating um, clinching the. Uh, the uh, division yesterday. So that's really why I'm here today to gloat. Uh, my, uh, my name is Brendan Shank. I'm EVP for engagement at Solar Landscape. Um, I Please, if you'd like, more than happy. I'm going to speed through things pretty quickly. Happy to try to take a couple questions um, up to Francesca on that, though. Um, I'm going to try to keep it to pretty quick, pretty high level, and uh, know that you feel free to heckle me on Twitter. Um, or shoot me emails with more stuff. Um, so a little bit about the, what makes our approach to community. We're going to keep things focused on community solar here because there is a lot of movement on that right now. Um, what makes our approach to community solar um, very cool and different in New Jersey and also across the country um, is we really focus on putting um, community solar projects on very large warehouses and industrial buildings and self-storage buildings, um, both in New Jersey and uh, across the country now. This is where we're actively doing projects in Maryland and Illinois at the same time. Um, and the reason we're doing stuff in Maryland and Illinois is because New, G New Jersey really became a national leader when it came to doing community solar and doing it in an equitable way where more people who would otherwise be left out in the fight, fight against climate change um, would be, are now included in that clean energy transition. Um, I'm gonna go real quick through how, uh, how it works here. I'm gonna try to do the presentation style here. Here we go. Um, basically, for those of you who don't know, and this will be the 30 second primer on it. Um, when we put solar panels on very large warehouses, which are off to the left, which are owned by commercial real estate companies. Um, we off we lease the rooftop there. It's just like we were renting the build and any other part of the building from them. And then we pay to use that part. And then the power goes back into the grid. So PSCNG, JCPNL, ACE, all of those go straight into the grid. And then, which means that there's more clean electrons going into the grid there. That energy then goes to homes and apartments and condominiums. Um, if you haven't seen it, there's a really good article uh, in the Philadelphia Inquirer in, I think, June or Joe, the July timeframe um, about one of our subscribers there and how the whole thing works out um, as a model for community solar. Um, one of the things that's really cool about community solar everywhere, but especially in New Jersey, is that the subscribers can be in homes, uh, such as like standalone homes, but also in apartments and condos and people who live there who might rent a rent their place or wouldn't think that they would normally be able to use solar, um, which is an important part of the equity of access to clean energy here. And they do so at a bill credit, um, give or take 20%, um, and then uh, oftentimes higher for people who um, attest as low to moderate income households. Um, that's important, an important part of this, the uh, New Jersey Community Solar Program uh, to in, to increase access to low to moderate income households to solar energy. Those very people who wouldn't necessarily have the resources to um, derive the benefits from being a, a warrior in a fight against climate change and for the uh, cost savings as well. All right, so that's how. Let's talk about why we do it. Um, first, just for clean energy to fight climate change. That's the easy peasy part of this right now. Every time we're building a project like these two in this graphic uh, that are up in uh, Perth Amboy, uh, we are creating more electrons that are generated by solar electricity versus fossil fuels um, and then sent to subscribers. So we're preventing millions of tons of carbon dioxide from entering the atmosphere. I always think about the, um, the BPU, 
the way President Joe Pirtaliso actually uh, hit the plunger on a on demolishing a coal power plant a year and a half or two years ago. And in that time, we're happy that we can be replacing the energy that was generated by those that coal plant with uh, with clean energy that doesn't even require using open space since it's on top of uh, since it's on top of um, buildings like this. Now, the other thing I should mention about why you do it on top of big commercial buildings like this, uh, in addition to not using open space, is that it gets built faster. Um, and that's the other thing, the urgency we need in this clean energy transition, and also the urgency because honestly, we're already, we're, our energy needs have plateaued for a bit, but we're seeing a 10% anticipated increase soon. And if that doesn't come from clean energy, it means that we leave fossil fuel powered plants on longer than they need to be. Um, energy equity, we talked about that as well. Expanding environmental justice by ensuring solar access for all. And in fact, just two or three weeks ago, we managed, we hosted um, EPA Regional Administrator, uh, Lisa Garcia and uh, Congressman Frank Pallone on one of uh, one of our rooftops to celebrate the solar for all funding. It's $156 million coming from the EPA to increase clean energy everywhere. And then of course, at the residential side, at the consumer side, in addition to doing the right thing, you're also saving money. Uh, in, in January of this year, we announced that we've already saved our subscribers a million dollars in aggregate, and we are just getting started. As I said, New Jersey's become a real leader in community solar and clean energy equity. There's more than 150 pr approved projects now um, that can power more than 35,000 uh, households. And we've you know, reduced the need for 200,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide. Um, if and when you are talking to other residents in your areas, here's what you can tell them about uh, the benefits of community solar. Um, it creates access for everybody to solar, for people who thought they'd never be able to go solar. Um, and it creates discounts for it, and there's very little barriers to it. There's no long-term contract. There's no, it's easy to get in to, that's easy to get out of. Our biggest challenge now is just gonna be managing um, the, the demand as the, the program continues to grow. Uh, then we also work with local nonprofits to help with their fundraising through projects. Um, to make sure that uh, in places where we are needing to subscribe people um, that we're communicating through trusted messengers. Finally, the other reason this is so exciting is because we have put down a $3 million commitment to workforce development. Um, one of the greatest challenges in all of clean energy overall is that we could create the infrastructure and we could create the, but we could create the demand for a workforce that isn't there yet. And so Solar Landscape is working through major workforce development grants, both through the governor, New Jersey Governor's Office of uh, Climate Action in the Green Economy, the U.S. Department of Energy, and the Department of Environmental Protection um, to make sure that we are training those people. We've done trainings in Pensac and before and uh, look forward to doing more um, across the state very soon. As I said, I was moving quickly. And for that, I apologize. I hope that's all right. I'm happy to take some questions now or field them later on one-on-one -on -one, uh, after tonight. Oh, one more thing. This is, these are a number of our partners, uh, both in New Jersey and nationally. Uh, Isles, Edison Job Corps, the Chicago Urban League, uh, Interfaith Neighbors in Asbury Park, all have been fantastic. Uh, partners in making and in introducing uh, the Ironbound and in introducing their community constituencies to the possibility of careers in uh, clean energy.